Welcome to Coach's Roundtable. I'm Ed Cody and welcome our guests, two Pennsylvania State golf champs. To my immediate right, Maddie Smithco from Cardinal World North Catholic. To my far right, Lauren Freivogel of Pine Richland High School. Maddie, let's go to you first. A sophomore, she wins the state championship. Uh, you were down by two strokes going into 15 and you rally and force a, a playoff so what what was going through your mind those last few holes i was two over going into 16 because i just three potted 15 and bogeyed so i was going to 16 not my favorite hole i was very nervous over that tee shot just because it's very difficult hit a good tee shot and then i had my favorite club in my he hand and i hit it perfect <laughs> and i hit it to like a foot so I made that birdie and she parred, so I got one back and I was like, okay. And I was thinking back to when I was a freshman. I was like, when I was a freshman finishing, I was super nervous. So anything could happen. And so I was like, okay, just all I got to do is make pars or birdie and just keep it going, which I did. I parred 17 and she bogeyed it. So we went to 18 even. And I was both hit a good tee shot. And then she hit first on the 18. And she actually hit it really good. She knocked it like 15 feet. And then I go up, and that was probably the worst shot of my day. Like, I just, like, nervous-wise. Because I had my worst favorite, like, my worst club in my hand. And I actually ended up hitting it perfect. So we both had 15 feet putts for birdie and both made them. So it ended up good. But the whole time I was a nervous wreck. Do you prefer your, your coach, I asked both of you, to talk to you during the match or just leave you alone? Uh... I don't like when people try and like give me advice personally, so I like them to just stay away. I don't like a lot of people watching me. Because you maybe overanalyze, think too much. Yeah, and I get more nervous when people watch me. Lauren, now you, you won by four strokes over your uh, arch rival from North Allegheny, Caroline Wrigley. I'm, I'm sure you two have gone head-to-head <laughs> -head yes. a, a number of mm -hmm. times. Uh, you had a 147, very consistent, 73, 74. I ask both of you, when you go into matches, is there any strategy involved? And a lot of people think there's no strategy. Do you pay much attention to your opponent during the matches? No, that's really mostly what match play is for. Stroke play is just playing the course and playing the best that you can and just executing your strategy of just hitting the fairways, hitting the greens, and trying to make birdies. So when your opponent has a real uh, tough putt or something, do you like what we call in Italian put a maioc on them like, quietly wish that they'll miss that putt then you give it a quiet yes when that happens not for me no. you definitely want them to do their she, best she's smiling <laughs> she does yeah. no i want them to do their best and i just hope that my best can be better what motivates both of you in in golf what's how do you get yourself ready for a, for a match I love how each shot's a new challenge and each course is different. Each hole shows many different shots with many different strategies. You can draw a ball into the pin or you can fade it. It's whatever your imagination's feeling and the lie you have. So I really love that part about it. And for you? I guess I've just always been like a competitive person. So I just like to try and play really good and see if I can come out with a win. Just because I love competing. Do you, do you pay attention at all, at all before the matches about your opponent and how well they golf or anything like that, or you just don't want to know? No, not really. Mm -hmm. I just go in with my strategy and my game plan of how I want to execute my shots on the course, and that's what I try and do. How did each of you get started in, in golf? And uh, What age? I started when I was 10 from concussions because I can't play contact sports anymore. Concussions from soccer? Uh, no, they're just from, like, I got two concussions, one was from falling, and then like a couple days later I went sled riding, my friend landed on my head. And, and so when you first got started, did, did you have any idea how good you would be? No, it was bad in the beginning. And did you take lessons? Yeah, I did. I started too early. And Lauren, how did you get started? Uh, when I was five years old, my dad signed me up for a clinic, and we did practice shots and learning the swing throughout the week, and then the last day we had a competition at the North Park Par 3, and I came in third place, and it was just love from there. 
Now you've committed to the University of uh, Virginia. Why, why Virginia? I love the school. I love the coaches. Coach Kim and Coach Callie are amazing, and they're putting together a really awesome program, so I can't wait to be a part of it. It's such an amazing school. Any schools that you're interested in this time? There's a couple I've been looking down in, like, Virginia, like William and Mary and um, pretty much anywhere in North Carolina would be nice. Where the weather is warm. Yeah. <laughs> what what do you girls do in, in now? The winter time's coming up, so mm -hmm. what do you do? Do you take, just take some time off, get away from the game? I usually practice at the RMU Dome in the winter. We go down there about three to five times a week and practice and hit balls. They have a little sand area there that we can hit bunker shots and then there's a punting green there so we can also work on our punting. I do the same thing and then try and focus more on like body strengthening, just trying to build up my body back for the summer. Did you both receive recognition when you got back to your respective schools after winning championship? Yeah, we both did. <laughs> Hold your medal up. Let's see your medal. She has one of those too. Very nice. Something that you'll uh, cherish for a, v a very long time. Is there anyone you admire Either one of you in particular that you say, boy, I'd like to pattern my game after after this uh, golf person or this pro? Yeah, definitely. So this year when I qualified for a Symmetra Tour event, I met a really nice lady. Her name's Rachel Rohanna. She won, I believe, two PIAA championships, and she graduated from Ohio State a couple years ago, and now she's on the Symmetra Tour and LPGA Tour. And it was amazing meeting her this year, and I really look up to her, and I would love to be on tour just like her someday. Manny, anyone for you? Uh, not really. I just like to watch the golf, and I'll see, like, different ladies and how they react to shots, and I like all the ones that are, like, calm if they struggle or and just try and fight back. Do you girls find, because you're so good, that the boys are intimidated to go out and golf with you? Definitely, they are. Definitely, yes. <laughs> Definitely. And they won't go? Mm-mm. No, no. Well, listen, congratulations to both of you. Uh, you have bright future. Just a sophomore for, for Maddie, so you have a chance to, uh, and you're a junior, they have a chance to uh, repeat. You have the WPL championships. Any other sports that you two participate in or play? No, yeah. just golf. And then it'll be, how much in, in now, uh, during the, the summer will you golf before your season starts, too? A lot. I travel around the country all year long playing in tournaments, so that's exciting. So your dad got you started, but you can beat him now. Yes, yes. definitely. Same with you. <laughs> yeah. All right, once again, our state champions in golf in 2A, Maddie Smithco, and in 3A, Lauren Freivogel. Congratulations, girls. Great achievement. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I'll be right back with Alan George. And back with to my right, the Swami George Abraham. And to the left, the Tiger Albert Campman. Just had two state champs on. We've been blessed in this area from Emily Gordon winning state championship oh, yeah. in tennis. Now these two girls, Maddie Smithco, Cardinal World North Catholic winning the double A championship, and Lauren Freivogel of Pine Richland winning the triple A. She's a junior, a Virginia recruit. Maddie just a sophomore. One thing I know for sure is those sports you mentioned, tennis and golf, individual sports that, that you have to put a lot of time in it. They've been shagging balls probably since they were little, little girls and just learn the value of swing, repetition, repetition. That's how you get good. Yeah, the skill sports are like that. And that's what's so impressive that they win because there are a lot of kids. You know, this isn't like 40 years ago. A lot of kids are golfing today at young ages, and these girls are obviously the best of the best. Guess who's intimidated? And doesn't want to play with them, the boys. Oh, no, be embarrassing. It's embarrassing. With that's why it's embarrassing. Well, you They're know good. who they are. Yeah, if you know good They're they good. are, then you should realize, yes. you know, hey, these girls are terrific. Let's go to high school football. The end of the regular season, our top rushers, Luke Mihalik, a butler, 249 yards, four touchdowns, included two kickoff returns for scores of 93 and 82 yards. Jordan Crawford, Pine Richland, 242 yards. Kenny White of Pine Richland, 209. Josh Thomason of Newcastle, 193. Phil Jacovic, Pine Richland, 178. Jay Carrot of Knock, 141 in a 21 to 10 upset of Mars. Marcus Hooker of Newcastle, 108. Turner White, North Allegheny, 104. And Connor Salinger of Freeport, 102. The top passers, Gabe Lawson, Seneca Valley, 236 yards, two touchdowns. Chance Nagy of Monotol, 218 and 
four touchdowns. Luke Truman, North Allegheny, 164, two TDs. Tyler Kowalkowski of Mars, 159. Ben Hughes of Riverside, 103 for two touchdowns. And Jake Schaefer of Slippery Rock High School threw for 116 yards, three touchdowns in a 38-14 playoff win over Harbor Creek which they scored 31 second-half points for that victory. Yeah, they only had a touchdown at halftime come back. Now they play Sharon uh, this, this week. And, and I, they played him tough the first time. Top receivers, Luke Smith, Seneca Valley, three receptions, 114 yards. Kate Hetzler of Mars, five for 96. Nick Mantino of Martino, excuse me, of Monotol, five for 89. And Wyatt Geibel of Monotol, eight for 55. In college football, Slippery Rock University, 24. Clarion 9, and the star of the game was defensive end Marcus Martin, who had four and a half sacks, picked up a fumble, and ran 84 yards for a touchdown. The four and a half sacks give him 54 for his career. He is number one all time, doesn't matter what level, in college football history in sacks. Talk to somebody that, that has his grandson on the team, said, you want to watch him practice not playing the game. That's that's where you learn for it. That's where <laughs> you he, that's where you learn how good he is. He says he's going to play on practice, Sunday. His practice habits are tremendous. Is he big enough? He's six four two forty. Oh, I think he could be an outside linebacker. The way they're using the edge rushers yeah. anymore. Yeah. That size. Oh, he's sure got a pedigree, and he's going to get a look when you do stuff like that. These coaches, they have scouts at their games. All they don't miss time. anyone. Is no. It, the tackle inserted no. in, in, in the game. Uh, the other the other night was from Bloomsburg. No, I have a buddy who's in the NFL. I forget the team. Albert I saw. Is it. it the Sunday night yeah, game? I saw. He it. came yeah. in Detroit. Yeah. I think. Hey, you, Albert, for you, know, you know we have a buddy. It's an agent. Eddie, they won't miss. You think he won't drive to Sibrock for a player? Yes. Hey, it's or starting fly. to become a habit. Grove City College, 24, Geneva, 7. Beautiful. Running back, Wesley Schools, 187 yards, 3 touchdowns. Next up for Grove City, 3-5, three 3-3 and five, three and three in conference play. They are at home with Bethany, Saturday at 1.30. Well, I don't care who wins the championship. Grove City coach is coach of the year. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that, 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 that should be, if, I, if that vote goes any other way, yeah. they're wrong. You know he took what? a team, never won a game forever. Four years. That's not won three. They got it turned around. He could be yes. best. It's turned around. And yes. let's, let's say why it's turned around. He can remember that run and shoot, spread offense, bring them in. We figured they're going to win 68 60. They've won three games with their defense. Some of the kids we mentioned in spotlight, running backs, receivers, sure. kids, take a good look. Division one's out of your focus, maybe. Take a good look at some of the small schools in the area, like a Grove City, Westminster, but, yeah. and, and even Slippery Rock, Albert of course. Yeah, yeah, some great well, programs. We, that, that's around. our theme, Eddie. Our yeah. theme is that all the time. The delusions of grandeur. Every kid should want to play the highest level they could play. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But until they will go and watch Grove City play, or watch Slippery Rock play, or watch whatever, they don't realize how good. Those players, and a lot of people don't know Scully and non Scully. There yes. are no Scullies in D3, that's why your grades are so important. Kids, they can throw more money at you if your grades are good. See, yes. these kids don't realize that till it's too late. They have an exciting offense. If, if, oh. if, I'm, if I'm like a slot receiver, even a, a, not big enough to play five, maybe five, ten, one eighty, I'm, I'm looking at some of these schools, they move the ball around. Oh, they, that, 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 that league, the Thomas Moore's leaving. But W and J out of town every case, year. Case, Carnegie case, Mellon, is loaded. Carnegie Mellon, really on the Westminster's really good. West the Mellon. Mellon. Really good. Yes, uh -huh. By the way, I forgot to mention the Rock seven and two. They they are at zero and nine, Seton Hill. I think they have to win these last two to get their invite. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. You're not going to get in with three losses. Two, you may sneak in. WPIL Boys Cross Country Team Championship for the second year in a row. It goes to Seneca Valley. Second place was Butler, third place North Allegheny, all from the same all section. Same <laughs> and the 3A individual champ, it's Noah Beveridge of Butler. He's a Syracuse University recruit. He's the WPIL champ. In second place, Seth Kettler of Seneca Valley. And in third place, Daniel McGoey of North Allegheny. In the same schools, I seem to track too. You know, they, they, uh, They'll be doing something, huh? Yeah, they'll be the top three teams in track and field. Two also. miles. Yeah. The Seneca Valley boys are trying to remember. Didn't they win yes, the WPL they championship? Yeah, they so you know how good their oh, track and program is. This kid from Butler, Florida State, flew up. Yeah. I thought there was nothing. And he, they picked Syracuse. Yeah, picked and Syracuse. It's cold huh? weather, but a great program, oh, great oh, school. Yeah, the track. You know, you're, that, don't forget, that's ACC track. Mm -hmm. Girls cross country, 3A. Uh, North Allegheny finished third. Seneca Valley fourth. 3A individual, Clara Sarch, uh, Savchek. 
of North Allegheny. She was third. And in girls soccer, 1A, Cardinal World, North Catholic, 3, Osh, nothing. Tori Mikulski scored all three goals for North Catholic in a playoff win, but then they lost a, a semifinal game to Greensburg Central Catholic. Greensburg Central Catholic undefeated. Yeah, they've been. We've talked about them in soccer before on this show. They've always been good. And in uh, 3A, Mars freshman Gracie Dunaway. She scored the winning goal in a two-to-one win over South Park. Next up for Mars, 16 and one. They take on Moon, 21 and 0 in the championship game. And in boys soccer, 4A. Uh, championship game, it will be Peters Township 17-0-1 versus North Allegheny 18-2-1. And, and in 1A, Cardinal World North Catholic 19-1, they take on Springdale. Uh, the the goaltenders come up big at this time of year, you know, because there's all, all kind of good players running around the field. We'll see how good the goaltending is. Let's go to our power rankings. Uh, High school football, the uh, final regular season in 6A. It remains number one, Pine Richland, followed by Bethel Park, Central Catholic, North Allegheny, and Penn Hills. And in 5A, for the first time ever in all the years we've done this show, number one, Grove City. Yeah, they're, they're loaded, and uh, they're going to waltz through the district, but then, you know, they're going to run into a good Whitfield team. But I've talked to people who think they're right there. Number two, Penn Trafford suffered their first loss of the season last week. Someone on the show picked McKeesport to beat them. Give me credit for one time, Eddie. One, one time right. I got it right. <laughs> Grudgingly, they give me credit. Number three, Gateway. Uh, four, it's a dangerous team now, uh, McKeesport. And number five, uh, USC. They got knocked off upset by Woodland Hills. Yeah, that, that last week had some. I think uh, Clareton upset the Jeanette. There's yeah. some upset. Mm -hmm. And in 4A, uh, South Fayette, followed by Bell Vernon, Thomas Jefferson, Newcastle, and Montour. In 3A, Eloquipa, Quaker Valley, Beaver, Derry, and Seton LaSalle. In 2A, Still Valley, Washington, Wilmington, Charleroi, and tied for fifth, Cardinal World, North Catholic, and Riverside. And in 1A, it's California, Monte Christian, Clareton back in there after that drubbing of Jeanette, 40 to 8, followed by Jeanette and Olsh. Our stories of the week, high school football game you will see here this week on Armstrong Channel 10, a game that Albert and I did. Pine Richland rushed for 628 yards and a 48-28 win over North Allegheny to finish 10-0 in school history. It's your seventh undefeated team. We saw it in the beginning, uh, George. Uh, N.A. was dropping off eight, dropping off eight, playing a three-man front. And they ran that zone read, and they, they just they just gouged them. They had touchdown runs at 93, 81, 69, 56, 45, and had a 65-yarder <laughs> called back Ouch. by Jacoby. Uh, yeah, I, I've seen one kid, or, or maybe one and a half kids, they had three guys almost rushed for 200 yards, so it didn't matter where who, who got the I ball. told you, I did one other game with Kiski. had two rushers with 220 <laughs> yards each. I never got to yes. Well, Jacoby would have 65-yarder yeah, he... called back it was, it was on, amazing. On, a, on a block by Jason DeFrancis. They called a defenseless player. You know, the kid turned, he, we he found popped them. guy called the show Saturday. When you have them, somebody in that position, if you don't block with your hands out, you have to, it comes back. It's called stock blocking or yeah, shadow they, blocking. Yeah, they no, you, they you, don't you, want you decleaning no, 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 if he can't see you. But then on a, on a similar play after that, Ray Falcone threw a similar block and no flag. Yeah, but once again, George described it. Uh, after, I, after I heard the, the rules, he led with his hands. The other kid, the first one, he led the kill. Yes. So, but you never <laughs> see it called. Your mouth hurts. When, when the tight end blocks down and there's an inside linebacker and he crushes them. They'll call it there. They're, oh, the they're not going to call it there. That's proximity inside to the, the line box. Of inside yeah, the that's box. That's what that is. Yeah, we had a rough call and we asked them. So, yeah, you had Crawford 242 and White 209 and Jakovic 178. But N.A. made them play a full game. It was only 35-28 to 28 in the fourth. What a great job by quarterback Luke Truman. Threw for 164 yards and two TDs. Running back Turner White for 104. And the, the Tigers made it close. They ex extended it. And I know at the end of the game it was 41-28. to 28. And Pine was still had the first team in there, and they ran for another score. And I found out the basis of that last year. And A was winning thirty to nothing at Pine Richland with two minutes to go, and they threw a halfback pass for a touchdown. So it, it was payback time, I guess. It's not an it, it's it's a bitter rivalry with with a lot of uh, intensity and animosity 
in that rivalry. In other words, both coaches, you ain't teaching, you're not teaching your kids anything. No. That's what you're, both coaches should be saying, call in and say, listen, yeah. I don't try to rub it in any time. Be the bigger just man. Win, just, yeah. yeah. Be the bigger just man the once game. you be, and, and nobody's ever going to feel sorry for him. They ain't everything, because as you see, they win everything. It just but, isn't but right. You heard no complaint from, <laughs> no. from Art Walker. Oh, because he did it the week before, year before, yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 30 yeah. nothing laid through halfback, hey. so I guess that's stuck in their hey, throat. He knew it was coming. Yeah. There, there, there's nothing. There's nothing like having an arch rival with a level of bitterness. That's why we watch Ohio State and Michigan exactly. and Notre Dame and Southern exactly. Cal and Pitt and Penn State. Well, how about That's Franklin what running to the line that week before to run one more play against Michigan? Now, last week, where was that halfback pass? <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to that. Six A playoffs, District Seven, Norwin. Five and five at Pine Ridge and ten and zero Friday. Oh. Uh, buckle up, guys. Oh, that clock will be going. Uh, like this. Mount yes. Lebanon six and four at NA seven to three. It's a rematch. That's a good game. Five uh, A game of interest. Uh, McKee Sport seven and two against West Allegheny. Talk about exacting revenge. They got snookered last year. In I remember you talking about that snooker. Game. I remember and, you talking about that. They lost forget. to Moon Friday night. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. And in four A, here's a team on a rise. Newcastle seven to three, Montour seven and two. Second game of the year, Montour pounded them forty-two to twenty-one. I'm taking the Canes in so this game. So am I. I I I read that one like you completely, Eddie. Team on the rise in all these teams you mentioned. Well, they weren't running Hooker early. Were no, they, they were oh. running like they were Thomas and Hooker. There you they go. are on the rise big time. What did Mars get for their upset loss at Knock? They have to go to Bell Vernon. Yeah, that, the, that's what the happens. Turf. The yellow field. That's what happens. That it, it changes the, the trip around sure where you have to go. And uh, and this time of year, we talk about home field. It seems like the home fields win early in the playoffs. At Freeport and 3A, 7-2, they're at Seton LaSalle. That's a repeat. About a month ago, Seton LaSalle beat them 21-10. to And in 2A, Brentwood, 5-4, uh, and four, they're at Cardinal World North Catholic. And Burgettstown, 6-3 and three at Riverside. Yeah, well, both those teams are going to advance unless it's, uh, those would be a big upset. That either one of them get beat. And in one A, Summit Academy will be at Clareton. In the old days, you say Clareton was a sure thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't say that anymore, but I think they'll handle yeah, Summit. Guilfoyle has sixty in a row. They're just waiting. Yeah, I talked to my brother. And they're he not said, as good. He said the line still is good. They got two seventy five uh, across the front uh, still. He said they don't have the great backs they had before. District 10, 5A, number one, Grove City, 9-0. They, they will take on Fort LaBeouf. That will be Saturday, 7 p.m. at Slippery Rock University. In 3A, Slippery Rock will take on Sharon, Saturday, 7 p.m. at Wilmington High School. You give the Rockets a solid chance. Uh, a chance. That speed at Sharon is just vicious. You know, one mistake and they have about three guys. Course, we, 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 but they played them tough. Remember, we did that game with Sharon at uh, Corn City that time, and uh, there, there was just too much speed. Wilmington. Wilmington. I was, was Wilmington. Uh, no, we did a Sharon game, too. Yeah, but I, I don't remember, yeah, but, but I know we, we, did, we, we did a Sharon game. You know, game I remember, Eddie, that too. the Sharon's coach was coaching. Uh, Ex-coach, that's what I remember. I don't know if it was a team or but not. They just, they're, just, they're good, but like you say. There are other teams in there. You know, and Hickory got a little reprieve. You know, they won that first one. They had a bad year. They have five straight district titles. And in 2A, it's number three, Wilmington, 9-0 oh. versus Maplewood. That'll oh, be Friday, 7 oh. p.m. That's the Rock University. It's good if you have somewhere to go after because it'll be Yeah, over. that's a whooping. That's a whooping. And they don't pass either, so it'll be over even quicker. Our, district 9, 3A, uh, Corn City, 6-4. and four. They will take on Punxsutawney, but that won't be until Thursday, November 9th at Clarion University. Yeah, George always explains that. Always explains that to me that the uh, the districts are different size, mm -hmm. so not everybody plays the same way. Hey. But you you see in the WPL District Seven Six A Championship games November seventeenth, mm -hmm. and and the and the others are like November twenty fifth. Yeah. Hey, preps off for five weeks. Five weeks. They're oh having their God. they're having their first ever Six A game up there. Yeah. yeah. First ever. Yeah, they, yeah. Preps four. See, no one will play them. Grove City's four A. Yes. They won't, so they, they move. Five. So therefore, prep doesn't have any games. Last, me, I, when it was last night, somebody said, "I asked, so who's the best team that anybody's seen?" They said, "Erie Prep." They said, "Erie Prep is well, who they yeah, murder from the from a Central Catholic." Right. They said they're the best. They said Erie Prep is college football. Goodbye, Columbus, trailing twenty-eight to ten and thirty-five to twenty in the fourth quarter. Ohio State outscored Penn State nineteen to three to stun the number two Lions. Quarterback J.T. Barrett, better put him in that Heisman conversation. 33 of 39 for 328. Rush for another 95 in the fourth quarter. 13 for 13, 170 yards, and three touchdowns. Yeah, and uh, everybody's blaming the Penn State defense. I'm, I'm on the other side. I'm blaming the Penn State offense. They stopped 
They stopped down their tracks. 283 and, yards and, is all they had. And they say, come on, defense, hold them. I thought they were supposed to be high-powered offensively. I thought the offensive coordinator was supposed to be a genius, and they did not genius in that fourth quarter, and now they got blamed. I don't, defense was tired. They were exhausted. You see the yardage. Yes. 520 to 280. It was a miss. 283. Ohio State's front four took that game over in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Now, interesting, Barkley had the 97-yard kickoff return. He carried 21 times for 44 yards, but one of those runs was 36. The other 20 carries, he gained eight yards. Yeah, that's what you say. The defensive line, Ohio State. They were back. Whooped. He, he, he didn't get going. Whooped. The Ohio State yeah, offense. He I mean, Penn State offense. Remember that? He, he was hit before he got to the line. Next up for now, number seven, Penn State. They're at number 24, Michigan State. Losers in triple overtime to Northwestern. But as you always say, you can lose two when you lose time. the one Without at the doubt, same time. If they're not ready to play, Michigan State will play them tough. You know that. Pitt 31, Virginia 14. I was there before a, a sit-down crowd of only about 18,000. Mm. But good for Ben DiNucci. 10 of 18, 134 yards, a, a touchdown. He's engineered back-to-back -back wins. I think they found a running back in Darren oh. Hall with 111. And how about Quadri Henderson, that 75-yard punt return, that seven kick returns in his career, one from the NCAA record. What's he got, three, four games to get it? He should get it. He should. And next up for Pitt, they will play on Thursday, November 9th, a chance to even their record. They take on 1-8 and eight North Carolina. Yeah, they play North Carolina, Miami, and Virginia Tech. Yeah, they need two of those ones to get to a bowl. Uh, they're going to get one probably for sure against North Carolina. Is that five? Uh, yes. If your thing's high enough with five, you can go. They have a chance. So then, so then Miami's the one. Miami's the one at home at Pitt. They got to play they at Virginia can't. Tech. No, they, they're not beating Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech, no. but they can beat Miami at home. Because well, Miami's open, but has, has lost that running back. Have not been playing as good. Mm -hmm. Quickly, let's go to the NFL. Defense, defense, like the Steelers throwback. The Steelers 20, Detroit 15. The Steelers D shut down Detroit in the red zone, even though Stafford threw for 4-20, 23. Uh, the Steelers defense was just spectacular, and they have a rising star in Juju Schuster-Smith, who caught the 7 for 193 yards. My, my thought on that game is the red flag still should be up. That they can't score on the road. Red zone. They that is score. an issue. Pittsburgh cannot and score on the road. good quarterback scores. So they're going to get beat. They're, they will not beat New England. If they're, if they're trying to score the final score 20 points against New England, they're out. They're let let me scoring. ask you about Detroit. What were they thinking? They can't run the ball between the 20s. What makes them think they can run it in the red zone down in the five? You're this far away on second and one from the goal line. Even Brady at 40 years of age will He'll sneak, sneak it. Every time. They turn around, hand the ball back. off seven yards deep. I don't get it. Then the one time they needed a field goal, they didn't. Then the you, one you time they pass it they, they, yeah, I, yeah, they Chuck, lost by two. And all the great coaches you watch, Chuck Knoll and Belichick and Lombardi, they kicked that field goal. You yeah. take the lead. Well, just, That's it's, what it's, it's just logical thinking. The, yeah. That was just logical thinking. They kicked it the right time, the wrong time, yeah. and yeah. they went for it the wrong time. And like you said, at some point we got to see some uh, uh, fumble rooski yes. or something because uh -huh. your stuff's not working. <laughs> New England makes a big trade. They trade uh, quarterback Jimmy uh, Garoppolo to the 49ers for a second-round pick 2018. Everyone's making a big deal about it, like all of a sudden Belichick got dumb. No, I don't, you never call him dumb for sure. There has to be, it has to be some salary structure. That's what I'm thinking, that somewhere he's going to save some money. They couldn't sign him next year, and they knew it. Something, and and they have salary. someone else in mind already in place to, to come over. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. curious who's who their backup will be Sunday. Uh, all I want to say is, you know, they lost uh, Deontay Hightower, for season end in injury, so they they come out and played the game against the Chargers with a four two five defense. Yeah, that's what they do. He does. He makes adjustments. That is it. We run out of time. We will see you next week.